Uh, my name is Brady Knights. I'm one of the co-founders of Spice and also the lead electrical engineer here. Cool, so it was you and your co-founders that started this restaurant, and how did the idea come about? Yeah, so it started because we were hungry college students, the typical, you know, trying to get a good meal without breaking the bank. Um, didn't have a whole lot of time to make our own food either. So we thought, you know, being engineers, let's you know, build a way to sort of solve that problem. We knew that wasn't just a problem that we had, but a problem that many other college students had and many other people um, you know, across, across the United States had. So uh, we thought that this was a, a fun way of, of getting people you know, healthy, delicious meals um, at an affordable price point. Now, when did this start? How long ago did you start working on this problem? Yeah, so it started out as just kind of a, a project that was a, a, a winter project at, at school. Sort of, you know, let's see if we can build a robot that cooks food. Um, and then that turned into a summer project, and it started three and a half years ago um, in uh, 2015, so January 2015. That's it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we you, went, you went from an idea to a restaurant in three years? Yeah, and a year and a half of that we were still in school, so it was kind of like a side project. It's only been two years full time that we've been working on this. How many people were working on the actual robots? Was it just you and your friends? Yeah, or was so it first it was just myself, Luke, Kale, and Michael, so just the four of us. Um, and that was, you know, we were doing that basically developing, designing this entire robot. Uh, so just the four of us, and then we brought in a few other engineers, uh, sort of um, uh, half a year to a year into when we were full time. Now, how does it feel to go from, you know, prototypes and I'm sure things with wires sticking out to a restaurant that looks beautiful like this? Yeah, um, well, if you saw some of the early prototypes, they were a bit rough. Uh, so every time I even go, you know, from our lab to this, this robot that we have in the restaurant here, uh, it sort of catches me and like, oh, wow, like, that's really cool. It, it, it's like we made an actual professional product, um, which, is, which is awesome. Um, and, you know, coming, coming just from school to do, doing this, uh, it's really exciting and um, definitely something that we're proud of. What were some of the first ideas that you had that maybe didn't make it into the restaurant? The very first robot that we used, uh, you know, it was uh, a different design. It was much smaller, actually a circular design as opposed to the one that we have here. We were actually using uh, a, a flame to, to, to cook the meal as opposed to what we have as an induction now. The induction just makes a lot more sense. It's, you know, uh, more energy efficient. It's, it's, it's faster at heating the wok. Um, and so we've, we've always uh, been under the uh, sort of design philosophy of you know how do we simplify things, how do we make things more efficient, how do we uh, make it so that the, the robot that we have in the restaurant is going to work work well every single time. And so we sort of went from the more you know outlandish ideas to something that's more refined, that's more more streamlined, that's more professional. Tell me about failure during your process. I mean, I'm assuming that you're working with really complicated stuff, and occasionally you failed, quote unquote. What did that lead to learning? Yeah, um, so one of the things that we were working on initially, you know, my module is the runner. That's that orange box they might see behind us sort of zipping back and forth mm -hmm. uh, with flip cups that sort of flip food forward into the, into the walks. Uh, and one of the things that you know, I developed first before I made the runner was actually a food catapult because we didn't quite have the food motion profile of the cups down. Uh, and so that was something we had to you know, work on over and over again. There's a lot of sort of uh, jokes about us making a food fighting robot as opposed to actually a food cooking robot. So if that had gone another way, this could have been just like we would be watching a food fight. Oh yeah, uh, you know, I'm sure you know, maybe in the future we'll do a, a food flinging mode or something fun like that. But, uh, but yeah, we had to make sure that you know, we refined the robot as much as we could so that it works well every single time. Now walk me through this. So there's a bunch of different automated processes here, right? So yeah. tell me about one of them. I'm going to go with the runner since that was the module that I designed. Okay. Uh, the runner, that's the, it's an orange box with some, some cups on it that you know, zips back and forth, sort of runs and grabs the ingredients and comes back and, and flips them into the wok. And basically uh, what its job is, is it goes underneath one of the hoppers that we have in the back, mm -hmm. collects rice or, or chicken or kale or some sort of vegetable mixture. Um, grabs that and then finds a wok that's that's at temperature and then uh, flings or flips that food into the wok, making sure that the woks get started so that we can keep cooking meals all the time. And then also it would add, it might add either some water or some like Thai or Indian sauce. And that's that, what the orange box is for. That's our, our, our sauce portioner. So it's going to put some sauce into the wok and help add that sauce, that water, that flavor to, to the cooking process. So then we've got the automated woks. Tell yeah. me about those. So those woks, uh, those are sort of like the, um, the eye catching, catching part of the robotics of the, of the robot. Um, and what those woks do is they heat with induction. Um, so they're going to constantly turn, and there's an induction coil actually on the side. So typically, if you have like an induction stove top, uh, that induction coil is on the bottom. You put your induction pot on it, and then that heats up the water or, or whatever you're cooking with. So our induction is on the side. Um, and so the wok gets up to like 400 degrees, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's going to pivot up. And once it pivots up, that means that the runner can now flip the food into the wok, 
Once it's done getting all the food, it's going to pivot back to the side again and then tumble for about two and a half minutes. And it's got to fit in there to sort of break up the food and make sure that all the ingredients inside the wok gets a constant even sear. Uh, once it, uh, around two and a half minutes is up, uh, the wok is going to tell the bowl mover that, hey, I need a bowl. Bowl mover is going to swing backward. The wok will then pivot forward, plate that meal. Bowl mover is going to get out of the way, and then the wok will go all the way upside down. Uh, and you'll see later um, there's um, some steam coming out of the wok. That's actually a, a water jet that's spraying the inside surface of the wok so it gets cleaned off for the next meal. So when in this process did you decide that you would also have automated ordering? That was something that we thought would be useful early on in, in, in the design process. One, because um, we find that as a customer, if you're able to see all the options that you have, able to customize things on your own time without someone sort of rushing you through the process, that's a more comfortable way for you to order food. Uh, also, it's an easier way for us to communicate with the robot, hey, we need, you know, a tie bowl um, with, with kale and, and frika, for instance. Um, that's an easy way for the robot to, to collect information from, from, from our customers uh, for those orders. And also it streamlines the garment uh job, the, the guys behind the, the bar. Um, they're actually getting that information from the order. Say you wanted um, you want cilantro uh, and scallions um, on top of your tie bowl, then they're going to see that on their, their, their tablets and know, okay, um, this customer is going to want uh, these toppings and I can put that on really easily, but streamlining that process as well. I really love the uh, screens above that kind of tell you who's the order for, so you can kind of be like, oh, that's my order. Yeah. Uh, when did you get that idea? Yeah, so, you know, when we were imagining the, um, so the experience of the restaurant, uh, we thought, you know, the details are really important. So um, things like having your name up above on the walks, so you know, which one is, which wheel is yours. That was something that we thought, you know, adding those little personal touches to the experience really makes makes going to a restaurant even more fun for, for our customers and for, for our guests. So I think having the things like the animation screens to put your name on there to show you what meal is cooking. And that way you can watch your, your individual meal cook in front of your eyes and know like, oh, this one's mine. This, this tie bowl that I'm watching is my meal and I get to watch it cook. And that I think adds a little bit of, of intrigue and it really connects you to, to the robot in a way that, that is approachable. Now, you just got out of school, practically, and when yeah. you went to school, did you have any idea you'd be a restaurateur? Yeah, so I told my parents, hey, mom and dad, I'm graduating from MIT, I'm going to the fast food industry, and they were super excited. No, I mean, I always loved food when I was in college. Uh, I would cook meals myself, and that was something that I was passionate about. I liked eating healthy, I liked knowing what was going in my, in my meals, but I didn't necessarily think that I was gonna go into the restaurant industry. Uh, going into school, I, wanted, I knew I wanted to go into mechanical engineering, do robotics and make something that could help people. So originally I was thinking I would do prosthetics and then I realized how much you know bio was involved and watching surgeries and I can't handle the sight of blood so I knew okay I'm not gonna go on that path anymore. So then I thought okay I'll go into robotics maybe I'll do you know, something else. I wanted to help people I wanted my what I built to be um, in sort of the public view so that they could they could see it and, and, and appreciate it and um, when Michael came to me with with an idea of hey you want to make a surfy robot I thought well, that's gonna be pretty fun. Like, sure, surely it can't be that difficult. If I had known how long and how hard it was gonna to be to make this, I might have thought twice, but you know, sort of ignorance is bliss, so. Um. That's a key point I hear from yeah. a lot of successful entrepreneurs, is that they didn't know enough to know that that would be something you couldn't do, so they did it. And yeah. that sounds like you. You didn't know that it would be hard, it sounded fun, and you just jumped right in. You kind of just have to take that leap and you know, trust that you're surrounded with a team that's going to support you. Things get hard on your end, they're going to help you out. And you kinda, you're kind of flying blind for a little bit, but you know that you know, you're surrounded by people who are going to work hard. And so at, at no point in this time did I think that the four of us you know, couldn't do what we're going to do. I just didn't know exactly what it was going to entail. So. Did it help doing it with friends as the team? Like if these had been four strangers, would it have been a d different experience? Yeah, I think that, you know, us, you know, living together in, in college, being on the same um, swimming and water polo teams, having that sort of understanding of, of how to get through tough times and, and, and sort of come together when, when you're under stress, when you're under pressure, I think that definitely helped. And, you know, at, at no point in time ever think like, oh man, like, Am I going to be able to rely on Luke to help build this thing in the middle of the night? Like, no, of course you are because you know you know he's got your back. You know that you got that trust in him. So I definitely think it was helpful that we all knew each other ahead of time and and that we knew that we we're going to support each other no matter what. Now these meals are built around the fact that you were you know starving college students couldn't afford to eat properly, right? And so how much do these meals cost? Yeah. So the base price of each meal is seven dollars and fifty cents. Wow. So how were you able to do that? You've got so many different meals to choose from, but they all start at that price. How did you do it? Yeah. So uh, we're very efficient in our process. So, um, you know, being engineers, we thought, you know, how do we streamline everything um, from, you know, 
getting the meals, getting the ingredients to serving the meals to, to the customers, um, trying to find ways of, of making it make it efficient, making it streamlined. Um, and so that's how we were able to get, get our meals to $7.50. And then we're very pro-robot, pro-technology on this channel. We know that that's what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people, their first reaction is, you're putting people out of work. What do you say to that? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, that wasn't our goal in starting this company. Our goal was how do we get healthy food to people at a price that was affordable. And I think once you come to the restaurant and you see what we're doing, you'll understand why we're doing it. And once you try the food, I, I think that you'll see, you know, wow, this is a great value for, for the price you're paying. What's your favorite dish at the moment? I so I love the the Indian bowl, uh, sort of the the peas and potatoes. It's a great mixture. That's something that reminds me of my mom cooking back home. Mm -hmm. um, then we have, also have a Lebanese bowl that that is new on the menu. I'm sort of falling in love with that. So it's sort of a battle between the two now. Any secrets you can tell us about uh, what's going on behind the scenes there? Like what you know, what's coming up next for the restaurant, or what you guys you know are planning in the future? I think you know we're gonna try to open up some more restaurants, um, which which should be exciting. Um, and then keeping working on, on developing developing the menu, uh, trying to add some new things, some new fun items. I know that our culinary team is really excited to really push the boundaries of, of what the robot can do, so expect to see some more fun things on the menu uh, in the coming few months. Did you expect this restaurant to be as successful as quickly as it is? I think I hoped that it would be, but I don't think I had any expectations. Um, it was really exciting having people come in for the first time, uh, the first few days. That was awesome, and then I started expecting, okay, eventually they're going to stop showing up. Like they seen the robot, they think it's cool, but I think people keep coming back because the food is so good. And that was sort of our, our hope: is that we sort of catch people with the robot as kind of a hook, but that they keep coming back because they enjoy the food. And I think we've been seeing that so far. Now, last question: When you first started, I'm sure that you, you know flicked on the switch, robots go, everything's good, you get a few customers, but now it's every day and you better be ready for them, right? Is yeah. that put extra pressure on the team? Uh, I mean, I, w I would be lying if I said it didn't, um, but so far the robot's been working really well, so it's kind of a weight off of our shoulders that you know, we can take a step back and sort of just observe and, and realize that things are working okay and now we can fo so fo focus on what's next. Nice. So great to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this. Course, I'm really yeah. excited to go in there and have some yeah. food. I hope you enjoy the food and uh, tell me what you think. Thank you. Awesome.